Hello everyone, welcome back to part 5 of our Perfect Regen series. Uh, this Football Manager experiment has been taking a look at what would happen if you gave a player 20 for every single stat in the game. Now the last four parts we've gone forward 20 years. Today we're going to go forward five more and then five more again. So you can see on the screen already we have gone to 38 years old. He was 33 at the end of the last episode uh, and he's still a player. He is only valued at £7 million, but his earnings have gone up to 300 k a week, so Spurs clearly still value him. He is only on a one-year contract, though, so could retire at the end of this season. Um, overall, his stats are holding up perfectly well because we froze them, um, so it's strange that the game still forces players to retire, even though their physical stats are still absolutely perfect. But it looks like with these one-year contracts, he will be leaving quite soon. There's nothing in his personal information that says he's thinking of retiring. Um, he's happy to see out the remainder of his career with the club, not the remainder of his contract. Um, and he did retire from international football in 2032, so that was just before the end of last episode, which I didn't pick up on. Um, so his England record is pretty much secure. He's got 205 goals in 197 games. That is one heck of a legacy. If we have a look at his achievements, skip straight to this screen. Actually, we should look at his career stats first and just see if the goal ratio kept up. And in fact, it did. He had a little dip, 24 goals uh, across 38 games. It was still 48 in 63 in all competitions. Then 49 in 62, 48 in 65, 51 in 62, and then 43 in 58. So he's still got this incredible goal scoring record, a 9.35 average rating in his last season. And it looks like he's still going this season as well. Um, if we just have a look at the achievements, see what competitions he's won. Uh, it is getting a bit repetitive at this stage, so I'm not going to linger too much on the uh, landmarks. But if we go straight to competitions and then scroll down to 33, which is where we left off last time, he'd won the treble. He'd actually won... Uh, the Champions League, FA Cup and Premier League. He went on to win at the Community Shield, runners-up in the EFL Cup, but won the Premier League and Champions League for the second year in a row. Uh, sorry, my mistake, he was runner-up in the Champions League last time out. But he has won it this time. Goes on to win the Community Shield, Super Cup, Club World Cup as well. Then the Premier League, FA Cup and Champions League. So he did do almost the clean sweep there. He's just missing out on the EFL Cup. But another Champions League victory. Uh, Community Shield again. Runners up in UEFA Super Cup. Won the FIFA Club World Cup. Runners up in the EFL again. Uh, did just miss out on the treble. Runners up in the Champions League. But that's a lot of Champions League finals that they're making now Spurs. Uh, won the Premier League again, I think that's just a consistent theme, and then won the Champions League yet again. If we just have a look at the past winners of the Champions League, you can see Newcastle have won it twice. What's that about? Um, <laughs> Spurs did win it in 24-25, and they've had three of the last five years. English clubs are dominating that tournament now. I guess the um, Premier League prize money does start to have quite a big effect over time. Um, if we have a look at his biography, you'll see it's pretty detailed now. Um, if you look at the competition wins, 63 competition wins, Premier League title from 24 all the way up to 38. I think he hasn't missed out on a single Premier League title. It is entirely Spurs' record. Just look at that run of victories. It took him quite a while to actually get the title. Arsenal were having the dominance up to that point. But since then, it's been all Tottenham. Um, that's quite an impressive little haul. He also won the European International League with England twice, 25-31. Uh, the World Cup, uh, FIFA Club World Cup rather, he's won five times. Confederations Cup, he won with England in 2029. The big one is still that World Cup that England won in 2026. Three times European champions with England as well is quite impressive. And now he's won the Champions League six times. There's a lot of other competitions, including the FA Cup, which he's won quite a few times, six times as well, and the EFL Cup is also on six or seven. Um, and he's still winning the individual player awards. World Player of the Year on 20 occasions. FIFA Ballon d'Or 20 times. So over two decades, he has been, without doubt, the best player in the world every year. That's quite impressive. Uh, not a bad feat at all. Um, we are just going to have a look at where England have got to without him, if they're still winning competitions or not. If you just have a look at their competitions history... Won the World Cup in 26, UEFA Championship 32, uh, International League in 31. It doesn't look like they've won a competition since he retired, which is a bit of a shame. Um, 
that is definitely the glory period for England was when they had Cencaldo the second up front. Um, now I have edited his staff details so that you can actually put them all up to maximum. He's got 20 for all the things that matter. Um, but I have also edited the current and potential ability in another save which I've advanced five years. And we're going to skip to that in just a minute to see how he gets on as a manager. I imagine he's going to be just as successful as he is as a player because we'll put all of his stats up to maximum and make him look good. So let's skip forward and see if he's retired and if he is now a manager at a football club. Well, one thing should jump out to you straight away, that is that he is now a manager, and he's manager of PSG, going straight up to the top. Um, now, one thing that I didn't do before the advance, I'm not sure if I could do it, I can go back and check, is that I didn't actually update his coaching or mentals um, to the point where they should be for the best manager in the world. So that does maybe give us an incentive to do another episode. But I know this has gone on for quite a lot longer than I thought it would, so drop a comment or a like on the video if you want to see how he gets on as a manager into the future. It looks like he retired a little while ago, so he does have a few seasons under his belt. You can see his history was as, as a player. He retired in 39. He had one more season with Spurs. Then he became manager of Bayern Munich. Now he's at PSG, and he only moved there last year. So it'll be interesting to see if he's won any competitions, if he got sacked as manager of Bayern, or if he just moved on. Um, to do that, we need to have a look at his career overview. Um, we can see he's already... Uh, in a couple of manager jobs, 742 days is the longest time at the club. He's bought 17 players, sold 15, spending £255 million in the process. Um, he's currently ranked fourth in the highest nationality ranking. That's quite interesting that he's done that in just three years of management. His win percentage with PSG is 79%. Overall, it's 75%. And that's before we even put his stats up. Um, he's also won two cup competitions and one league competition with PSG. But he's already won 10 trophies in three years as a manager. And we've still got so much further to go. Um, if we put up his coaching stats as well, PSG really could just be winning every competition under the sun. Um, let's have a look at his achievements as a manager. And if we just start with his time at Spurs, he did also win the Community Shield, runner-up in the Super Cup, won the Club World Cup, and finished runner-up in the AFL Cup. There were no other big competitions, which makes me think that that might have been the reason he retired. He then went to work for Bayern Munich, they managed to get uh, the Bundesliga and the Champions League in his first season. Can you believe that? He also won the DFL Super Cup and UEFA Super Cup the following um, start of next season. But winning the Champions League and league in your first season as a manager is not bad going. They went on to win the FIFA Club World Cup as well. Um, went on to win the Bundesliga for a second time, the DFB Pokal for the first time, the Trophy de Champion with... PSG um, carried on going. It doesn't say if he resigned as manager of uh, Bayern or if he was sacked. I can only imagine that he resigned given they won the league that year. Um, he also won Ligue 1 in his first season and the Coupe de France as well. He's not won the Champions League with PSG yet. But I imagine that's only a matter of time. Um, if we go to his time at Bayern and have a look at his overall uh, it does say he left as manager of Bayern, not sacked as manager of Bayern. So can you only imagine that he has um, left of his own accord to go and join PSG, especially given he actually won the title with them. Um, and that's just quite an impressive sort of thing to have done immediately after leaving a, as a player. He's gone on to win so many competitions with Bayern and then with PSG. It'd be interesting to see where he does go, especially when we put his stats up. Um, if you guys would like an extra part of this series where we do put all of his stats up to 20, do drop a like on the video and a comment or subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already. I'm going to put all his stats up to 20 for my own interest and probably go forward a bit now. Um, but do let me know if you want to see that. But until next time, see ya.